I randomized my favorite Pokemon game of all time, Pokemon Black 2, and today we're gonna find out if I can beat a randomized Nuzlocke using only shiny Pokemon. For this challenge, I've hand selected a few Nuzlocke rules to make this as interesting as possible for me, but mostly for you. Namely, I can only catch the first shiny Pokemon I encounter in each area, if a Pokemon faints, it's considered dead and I can no longer use it, no items from the bag can be used in battle, and for this challenge, I won't be using level caps because it's really annoying with the randomizer, but I've tried my best to avoid overleveling where possible. This was a crazy run, and we ended up catching a whole bunch of really interesting shinies. You don't want to miss this one. We kicked the run off and are presented with our three starter choices, Tynamo, Happiny, and Litwick. And honestly, there's really only one right choice here, and that would be the baby candle itself, Litwick. Shiny Chandelure is just too awesome to pass up. So we begin resetting for our shiny friend. If you've ever shiny hunted the starters in this game or seen a shiny only run, you know how annoying this process is. You've got to get through a bunch of dialogue, then choose the Pokemon, then go into the party screen to check for your shiny. It's quite tedious. Luckily, we get pretty lucky and don't have to spend too long doing this whole thing. And before long, we see the blue flames of our shiny Litwick. And this thing is insane. It's got a modest nature, which raises its special attack and lowers its attack which is the best nature possible. With the candle on the team, we head into our first battle against Hugh, who I guess decided that Bianca's Pokemon weren't good enough for him and instead brought his own Musharna. This thing being fully evolved and pretty tanky could be an issue for our Litwick, but thanks to a few clutch flinches from Astonish, we managed to make quick work of the brainchild. Now at this point, we head out of town to kick off our adventure. On the very first route, we run into some pretty scary wild Pokemon, but thanks to the levels on Litwick we got from Musharna, we aren't in too much danger, and as we enter the the next town, we're introduced to the titanium need cliff jumping ex champion himself, who sizes us up and decides to take us under his wing. After a quick lesson or something and a spooky encounter with a local landfish, we have yet another battle against our rival Hugh. This one certainly ends up being a bit closer than the first, but thanks to a clutch burn and confusion, we win yet again. With Hugh defeated, we decide to start looking for our first wild shiny Pokemon. And it turns out that at the Flochessy Ranch, there are quite a few good options, but there is one specific Pokemon. Pokemon that we're really hoping for. That Pokemon is Roggenrola. If you've followed the channel for a bit, you know that Shiny Gigalith is one of my absolute favorites. And with the help of the Universal Randomizer, trade evolutions are entirely possible. So we get to work looking for a Shiny Rock, which thanks to it being the most common Pokemon in the area and our continued luck from the starter hunt, we find it within basically no time at all. Of course, we catch it and nickname it Gigachadet in honor of the OG Gigachad from our previous Pokemon Sword Run. Then we check its summary and see that it has an insane impish nature, which raises its attack and lowers its special attack. Not only that, but it also has the shell armor ability, which prevents it from taking critical hits and is one of the best abilities for a Nuzlocke. At this point, we have a bit of an odd encounter with an evil team grunt out in the woods, then head back to town for a lesson with the champ, where one of his trained child assassins almost wipes us with a surprise hard counter to our team, a Marsh Stomp. But we managed to survive, and now it's finally time to challenge our very first gym. But on the way there, we end up getting an insane surprise encounter. But before we get to that, I do want to take a quick second to ask that if you're enjoying the video, you scroll down and subscribe to the channel and throw the video a like. Just simply doing that helps this video perform better in the algorithm and helps me out more than you know. I really appreciate your support. Thanks. Anyway, this surprise ends up being a random encounter with a shiny Crocorock, which despite its best efforts, we managed to catch and nickname Girl Croc. This thing ends up having a whatever gentle nature and the download ability, which is actually pretty good. But the best thing about it is that it's a middle evolution, meaning it's by far the strongest member of our team at this point. So after training our Girl Croc up, we head in to take on the first gym leader, Charon. And you know what? Thank goodness that we have this croc on the team because the first kid in the gym leads with a Porygon Z and anchors his team with a Clang, two very dangerous Pokemon that probably would have swept us if it weren't for our crocodile friend. Thanks to her, we're able to clear the two trainers no problem, then head up to challenge Charon. This fight ends up being a bit of a doozy, let me tell ya. Charon leads with a Gabite, who on its own isn't too bad, going down to two bites from our croc. Then he sends in his Ace Sharpedo. This is the point where we realize that our whole team is very weak to water. But thankfully, this thing doesn't have a water move yet, so we're able to take it out with the tag team combo of Girl Croc into Giga Chat at. And with that, we secure the normal badge as well as the Thunder Punch TM, which might help us out a little bit with our water weakness. Now, with the first gym badge in hand, we set off to Verbank City to take on the next gym. Before heading down into the nightclub slash Pokemon gym, we take care of a few things in the city, including picking up an early Stone Edge TM for Rog and Rolla and trading this guy a Pokeball for a Great Ball. No take backs. Now, with all of that stuff out of the way, 
we head in to vibe out to the song of our generation and challenge Roxy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not so fast there, big guy. We also have a battle against the drummer of Roxy's band where we almost throw to his second Pokemon, this Among Us. But thanks to our killer Pokemon instinct, we managed to clutch it out, then challenge the gym leader Roxy. Honestly, nothing too crazy happens here because we managed to one-shot her lead Chimeco with a bite from Girl Croc, then her ace turns out to be a Nidoran, which is frankly embarrassing. And that allows us to secure the toxic badge with ease. Roxy also gives us the TM for Snarl, which is a pretty insane move. Then after being selected to star in the newest Pokestar Studios feature film, yeah, no big deal, and dealing with some more evil team nonsense, we set sail to Castelli city. On our way into town, this clown gives us a free bike, thanks I guess. We take a wrong turn down an alley and Am see right? some things. <laughs> And we have to pull the gym leader out of the sewer of all places. Man, I don't think that I'm cut out for the city life. But with Berg retrieved, we can head in to challenge the third gym. Which, keeping with the creepy theme of this entire city, of course is full of clowns, covered in spider webs, and ah, I hate it here. Luckily, we don't have too much trouble making our way up to the top of the gym to take on the leader, Berg. On the first turn, we take a big crit from his lead Nidoran's super effective double kick on Girl Croc. But luckily, the Croc survives and takes it out on the next turn. Then we're able to take out his Fampy with Litwick and Rog and Rolla. And finally, we dispatch his ace Spoink easily with Stone Edge. And with that, we secure the Bug Badge, as well as the hilarious, but not super useful, TM for Fissure. Then we head on our way. Before we progress any further, we decide it's time to grab another team member. And so we double back to get something from the Verbank Complex, which has some really awesome Pokemon in it, including Hydreigon, Espeon, Ferroseed, and Melodic. And after a while spent hunting, we end up finding a shiny Melodic all by its lonesome. We manage to catch it without any casualties and nickname it Pretty Boy. It turns out to have a neutral hardy nature and the pickup ability. This melodic is awesome not just because of its killer shiny model, but also because it addresses our big water weakness. Now with our new beauty king on the team, we train up Rog and Rolla until it evolves into a Bulldore, then head north of Castelia City, where we're challenged by Colrus. Expecting just a normal, calm fight, we lead with Litwick. But it turns out Colrus is rocking a Hydreigon as his lead, which is pretty unfortunate to say the least. Knowing that we're probably in trouble and and we can't afford a switch, we stand our ground with Litwick and manage to get a super lucky Quick Claw proc, which allows us to land a Will-O-Wisp on the first turn. With the Hydreigon burned, we're able to live through a bite and get a Minimize off the next turn, thanks to yet another Quick Claw proc. Unfortunately, it lands a Dragon Breath through the Evasion, which forces us to switch to Melodic. After some more Burn Chip and tanking a few Dragon Breaths, Chorus uses his Super Potion. But we have enough gas in the tank to outlast the pseudo-legendary monster and take it out with Twister. Then we clean up his second Pokemon, Mindfu, without too much trouble. Definitely Definitely a close call, but I was, I was, I was never worried. <laughs> From here, we have a random run-in with a Biker with a Giratina and pick up the Sludge Bomb TM, which is pretty strong, then head in to check out the Desert Resort. But on our way in, we have yet another random shiny encounter with a Knocked Owl, who we catch and nickname Mrs. Owl. Not the most exciting shiny by any means, but we'll certainly take it. And this is the point where my brain decided that the run was going too well, and things started to go off the rails for a little bit. First, I had no idea what type Keldeo was, so we ended up losing Bulldore to a Bubble Beam in glorious fashion. Next, we went into the woods to potentially grab another shiny and ran into a breeder with a Kyogre lead, who ends up taking out Mrs. Owl and Girl Croc. Rip. Good thing we have a lot of encounters left, right? <laughs> so now we head out to Route 5, where we do manage to find a shiny Keldeo. Awesome, right? Yeah but it ends up taking out our Melodic. We know our Litwick probably can't get away from this fast horse, so we stand and fight. And we manage to barely live a Bubble Beam, but we just can't catch it. In a last ditch effort with our Litwick on five HP, we throw a Hail Mary Great Ball, which somehow ends up catching it and saving the run. We nickname this thing Bro, in honor of my favorite phrase for the last two hours or so of gameplay, and this might be a bad situation, but at least we didn't reset. At this point, we know that we can't take on the next gym with our two-man team, so we head into the Relic Castle, where we manage to find a shiny Togetic, which we catch and nickname Yogi. Then we see it has a timid nature and the normalize ability, which is okay, I guess. I, I don't really know. Anyway, after training the team up a bit, we decide it's time to hit the runway and challenge the gym leader, Elisa. She leads with a Hitmontop, which doesn't know any moves 
moves that can actually hit Litwick, so we're free to set up full evasion with Minimize. Then we take it out for free, and she sends in her ace Pidgey, who whirlwinds us out, but that's not quite enough to save it, and it goes down to a bubble beam from Keldeo. Finally, her last Pokemon Cacturn comes in, which we're able to take out without too much trouble with some double kicks. And just like that, we have a whole new team and the fifth gym badge. Before we move on, we decide we probably need some more backup on the team, so we head back to Route 4 and start looking for another member. We were really looking for a shiny Trico on this route, but we end up finding a shiny Kulava first, which is really not too bad, and we catch it and nickname it Hot Boy. Then check its nature and see it has a rash nature, which raises special attack and lowers special defense, which is pretty okay. Now we decide it's time to continue our adventure, which brings us face to face with the heartbreaker Charles himself, who teaches us so many things that I really wish we didn't have to learn. How to love, what it feels like to have our heart broken, and rotation battles. Anyway, we close that dark chapter of our life and head across the bridge into Driftvale City. After grabbing some fresh Moomoo milk from the local market, we head down to challenge the gym leader Clay. And this one ends up being a bit of a doozy. His lead Staryu isn't too much of an issue, Keldeo gets it pretty low, then we swap to Togetic and finish it off with a fly. It's when he sends in his ace Dialga that things start to go a little bit crazy. Luckily, Togetic is able to live one hit of Dragon Claw to get a yawn off, but we end up having to sack Togetic with the free switch we're able to bring Keldeo back in and start chipping away with some super effective double kicks. Thankfully, we live a Dragon Claw, then are able to take it out without Clay getting a chance to heal. Then he brings in his last Pokemon, Celio. This is trouble because our only Pokemon not weak to water is Keldeo, and it's super low at this point. So we make the hard choice and stay in to maybe try to take it out with one turn of double kick. Unfortunately, the kicks don't quite take it out, but through some divine intervention or something, this thing decides to set up hail instead of attacking. So we're able to clean it up on the next turn and secure our fifth gym badge, as well as the TM from Moonlight, which we immediately teach to pretty much everyone on the team. From here, we proceed to 360 dunk on everyone in the Pokemon World Tour, narrowly manage to stop an evil team invasion, evolve Kulava into Typhlosion, then head through the Charge Stone Cave and arrive at Mistralton City, where we meet up with Professor Juniper and the gym leader. Here we find some leftovers on Route 7. I also think we found some choice specs on our way here. I don't remember. But it's at this point that we start searching for another shiny to maybe fill out this team for once. We do manage to find a pretty awesome new addition to the team in a shiny Mamoswine in the Charge Stone Cave. We catch it and nickname it Mammy, then head in to take on Unova's second most deadly gym. And we're talking trainer fatalities here, not Pokemon. I mean, who thought this place was a good design? People must die here every day. Anyway, we work our way through this wind tunnel slash death trap, dodging most of the trainers along the way, until we arrive at the gym leader Skyla. She leads with a Mind Shao against Mammy. After some quick research, we realize that Mind Shao can't hit Litwick, so we make a quick swap as Skyla goes for a jump kick, doing massive recoil on the miss. We get it down to heal range on the next turn, then Skyla heals and swaps to her ace Primplup. So we make a quick swap to Keldeo and take it out with a couple surfs. Next up, she brings in her Wobbuffet, which thanks to the randomized abilities making it so it doesn't have Shadow Tag, we're able to swap to Litwick and burn it with Will-O-Wisp and stall it until it goes down from the burn chip. Finally, she's down to just her Mind Shao, which Litwick finishes off. And now with the Jet Badge and our Badge Binder, we take a quick plane ride with Skyla over to Lentimus Town, all the way over on the other side of the region. Here we pick up Earthquake for Mammy at the Move Tutor, then we check out this house, aka the Spooky Zone, Ooh. and we make our way through Reversal Mountain with Bianca. As we're making our way through, we decide it's about time to add another member to the Suicide Squad that is our team. So we get to work looking for a shiny in the basement, which just so happens to be the place where Metagross has an extremely high spawn rate. And before too long, we find our blinged out badass Metagross, which we catch and nickname Ross. And it turns out to have an insane adamant nature, which is one of the best natures for Metagross, raising its attack and lowering its special attack. Next, we make our way out of the cave, then train up Litwick until it finally evolves into a Lampin. Then we head out of town, but as we're trying to leave, we're challenged by Hugh again. We make quick work of his lead Ghastly with a Zen Headbutt from Ross, then take out his Stoutland with another Zen Headbutt. And finally, his Ace Musharna goes down to some snarls from Keldeo. With Hugh thoroughly embarrassed, it's just a quick journey up Route 13 until we arrive at Lacanosa Town, where a bunch of exposition happens, but we really don't care about that now, do we? So we mash through that, then head out to Route 12, where tragedy strikes in the dark grass. We run into a wild Metacham Kingdra combo with Lampet and Mammy as our leads. On the first turn, we try to run, but we can't escape, and Mammy ends up getting double targeted by damaging moves from both wild Pokemon. An insanely unlucky draw, but I guess that's just how it goes in the randomizer world. But the Mammy-sized hole in our heart doesn't have to wait too long to be filled, because as we're making our way across the village bridge, we stumble across a shiny Regigigas. That's right, baby, Regigigas is back and better than ever. We end up having to burn our Master Ball 
myself for it, but I'm not too worried about that. Having a shiny Regigigas for our second randomizer run in a row is pretty incredible. It has a neutral nature, and because of the random abilities, it has Swift Swim now instead of Slow Start, which makes it an incredible addition to the team. A bit, 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 <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, so next up we arrive at Opelucid City, the home of Unova's deadliest gym. And it's not just because of the bottomless pit without safety rails around it. It's also this random trainer with a Hydreigon lead and a Metagross anchor. Luckily, we managed to defeat them without any losses and make our way up to face off with the gym leader Drayden. He leads with a Vile Plume against our Keldeo, so we swap to Hot Boy and take it out with some fiery dances. This move is insane, by the way. Then Drayden sends in his Lantern, so we bring Reggie Gigas in, who takes it out with a couple strengths. Finally, he's down to just his ace Machamp, so we swapped to Lampant, who Machamp can't hit, and clean it up no problem. After defeating Drayden, the evil team opens fire on the city and freezes the town and the surrounding area. Luckily for the residents of the town, this happened to be right as we were passing through. So we skate across the icy ground, decimating any trainers that stand in our way. Then we kind of forget about the active war that the evil team has just declared on all of society and continue with our gym challenge. We head through my favorite area in any Pokemon game ever, the Marine Tube then arrive at Humalau City, where we meet my favorite character in the game, the gym leader, Marlin. Wah! Sup? Then we head right in to take him on. He leads with a Feraligator against our Lampant, so we immediately swap to Regigigas, who takes it out with a couple Thunder Punches. Then he brings in his Grumpig, who also falls to Regigigas, and finally he brings in his Ace Clefable, who manages to set up some evasion with Minimize and be really annoying with Sing, putting us to sleep, but ultimately it's not very threatening, so it goes down after a while. After we beat him and secure the last gym badge, Marla just kinda dips out. Boy, That guy is so cool. At this point in the story, there's a bunch of evil team stuff with their ship and Kyrim or something, and it takes forever. So I'll just show you the highlights. First off, cool guy Marlin helps us break into the ship. Then we make our way to the control room to have a double battle with Hugh against a Sage and a Grunt. They don't put up too much of a fight, but the Sage does have a Meloetta in the back, which is kind of cool, I guess. And after we defeat them, the ship makes its way somewhere else, and we make our way through the Great Chasm to chase it down. Also at this point, we're able to use a Dust Stone on Lampant to evolve it into a Chandelure, and finally we get to see that super sick shiny that we've been waiting waiting for all game. After that, we managed to find the evil ship and work our way into the control room yet again, where we have a battle with Colrus, who has probably the best custom battle theme of any Pokemon character. He leads with Infernape against our Metagross, but we managed to swap to Keldeo, who just takes it out with a Surf. Then he brings in Gardevoir, and we swap back to Metagross and take it out with a Meteor Mash. Next up is his Heatmore, who actually ends up giving us the most trouble, which is kind of hilarious. It sets up an Amnesia, then just hits super hard until we're able to swap around and take it out with Regigigas. Then his Cricketoon comes in and does what it does best, gets knocked out. And finally, he sends in his ace Shaman. This thing turns out to have no answer for Chandelure, so it kind of just dies. Now, with Colrus defeated, we're finally able to get Hugh back his sister's purloin that apparently he's been looking for through the whole story, but it's been horribly disfigured into a disgusting Lipard, so it's sort of a lose-lose situation, I guess. It's at this point that the real villain, Getsis, reveals himself. So we head into some cave to take on him and Kyurem. Just before the battle, End shows up for some reason, and the legendary Pokemon have a huge DBZ battle scene, then fuse together into a Rotom, which we defeat, then take on Getsis himself. He leads with a Gengar against our Red Gigas. And on the first turn, we managed to live a kind of scary crit Dark Pulse, then get a Paralysis on it with a Thunder Punch. From here, we finish it off on the next turn, and next up, he brings in his Hippodon, who goes down to a Surf from Keldeo. Then he sends in his Crobat. So we swap back to Regigigas and take it out with a couple Thunder Punches, healing up with Moonlight along the way. At this point, he brings in his Ho-Oh, who sets up Sunny Day as we heal with Moonlight. Then it lives through our Thunder Punch and lands a Life Orb Sun Boosted Fire Blast, which almost takes out Regigigas but the tank survives and finishes it off on the next turn. And finally, he's down to just his last Pokemon, Chandelure. We stole out the rest of the sun turns by swapping around, then bring Regigigas back in to finish it off. And now, with Getsis defeated, End bids us farewell. Bye! and we're free to make our way through Victory Road and on to the Elite Four. The observant among you might notice that there is one empty slot on the team. And while we probably don't need it to beat the game, I just really want another shiny. As we're working our way through Victory Road, we find the perfect room to hunt for our last team member. It's a room 
absolutely stuffed full of soul rocks. And before long, Martin rears his ugly red head. We catch him and obviously nickname him Martin. Then we have a super anticlimactic final battle against Hugh, who can't seem to put up a fight even with a Metagross on his squad. At this point, we arrive at the Elite Four ready to rumble. So we make our final preparations, then head in. Since it's randomized, the order doesn't really matter, so we decide to go from left to right. That means first up is Chantal, who leads with a Chinchino, which proves to be too powerful for Martin, putting him to sleep on the first turn, so we swap to Chandelure, who Chinchino can't hit, and we take it out. Then she brings in Reuniclus, who goes down to Chandelure easy. Same with her Dodrio, who does manage to get some decent chip on us, making us have to swap to Keldeo for her last Pokemon, Linu. But it puts up almost no fight at all. So now next up is Grimsley, aka the second trainer from the left, who leads with a Ludicolo, which Ross dispatches with ease. Then he brings in a Flareon, who gets surfed by Keldeo. Next up is this Latias, who gives us some trouble, so we swap around, but ultimately take it out with Ross. And finally, his Berardic dies in one hit from Meteor Mash. With Grimsley defeated, next up is Caitlyn, aka trainer number three, or Flower Girl for short. Her Simisage dies to Reggie Gigas quicker than we forgot that it was ever a Pokemon post Gen 5. Then her ace Mamoswine comes in and lands a crit earthquake, leaving Reggie Gigas at a mere 15 HP. Very spooky. But we're able to swap to Keldeo, who cleans it up with a surf. Then Keldeo is able to take out her Arcanine and her Honchkrow as well. And finally, we take on Marshall, or as he's better known, the trainer on the right side of the main room. In a super anticlimactic fashion, his team sucks and just gets swept by Martin and Chandelure. And now with the Elite Four defeated, we head in to take on the champion Iris. We lead with Hot Boy against her Golurk, and our choice specs boosted Giga Drain just isn't quite enough to take it out in one hit. So we end up losing Hot Boy to an Earthquake on turn one through absolutely no fault of our own. No problem though, we're able to clean it up with the Surf from Keldeo. Then she brings in her Amoongus, so we swap to Chandelure and take it out with a Fiery Dance. Then she brings in her Gorbis, and let me tell you, this thing was a menace. We swap to Keldeo and end up taking 75% from a critical Hydro Pump even through our resistance. We manage to outspeed and heal up with Moonlight, but on the next turn, it lives through a Sacred Sword and puts us at 2 HP with a super effective Psychic. Thankfully, it goes for a dive after that, so we get a free-ish swap to Ross and get big damage with the Zen Headbutt. But it lives and fires back with another Hydro Pump, leaving us at 11 HP. Thankfully, we're able to finish it off from there with another Zen Headbutt, then swap to Regigigas as she sends in her Zeb Striker. Then we manage to stall through a bunch of wild charges by using Moonlight to heal up and ultimately take it out. Next up is her Marowak, who kills itself with the recoil damage from Double Edge as we swap to Martin. And finally, she's down to just her last Pokemon, Reuniclus. After missing a Stone Edge, we land the next one. Then we decide it's time to end this thing with a bang, which, uh... Ends up being a bullet punch from Metagross. Anyway, with that, we've done it. Thanks for watching. Like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. I hope you enjoyed the run as much as I did.